What determines a generational player? And how many generational players are there approximately per decade? Three? Four? Five, maybe? In many cases, even superstars are not them. It's difficult to establish a scale that allows us to identify generational players, but what is clear is that they're players who often have spectacular conditions, or what people call nowadays unicorns. But what really goes down in history are not only the players. Many times, it's the duels they have with each other. Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Stephen Curry, all of them have been present in direct duels throughout the history of the NBA, joining forces to enlarge the legacy of the era in which they were the greatest exponents. And the Chicago Bulls will move on to play the New York Knicks in the best of seven. And with the arrival of a new generation, the future's bright. It's been a long, long time since there's been a sensation of the magnitude of Victor Wembanyama in the basketball world. The Frenchman's been practically on the world's front page since just before the COVID pandemic, where he began to make his mark in European competitions. But his professional debut came a few months earlier, when he played for the first time in the Nanterre 92 first team at the incredible age of 15 years old. All signs pointed to Wemby's potential to become a star at a very young age. But the seasons he played in the French League multiplied his hype. He spent the 2021-2022 season with Asvel, where he averaged 8.2 points and 4.4 rebounds per game. But when he arrived at Metropolitan's 92, that's when the alien really landed. For Henderson, these two guys have gone step for step against each other. Wemby, Wemby took only 10 games to lead the LNB Pro A in points, rebounds, and blocks a season prior to making the leap to the NBA that served as a showcase to place him as one of the best prospects in the history of basketball. By now, everyone knows it, but there are too many aspects of Wemby's game that attract attention on the surface. In addition to his massive 7'4 height and 8'0 wingspan, Victor's a truly athletic player. A mobile, agile forward with good speed, he can contain players on the perimeter with ease, and just lacks the weight to dominate the paint with even greater ease. But with the ball in his hands, the Frenchman is one of the most spectacular players in the world. He has very good ball handling skills, being able to run the fast break, as well as the ability to create his own shot from virtually any position on the court. Got you with the Suns last season, and then when they ran into the Denver Nuggets, yeah. that's good, but yeah. A player with amazing versatility, with an incredible size that should not allow him to do that. But the reality is that Wimbanyama is not one of a kind. The NBA is experiencing a revolution within big men, a group of players that was becoming increasingly extinct in a league driven by outside shooting, in which virtually every player in the competition is capable of scoring from the outside with regularity. But the arrival of Jokic and Embiid has shown that the center position is far from dead, and it looks like the new generation of inside players will pick up the baton. Chet Holmgren has been a player who also received a good dose of hype during his formative years, but nowhere near the level of the Frenchman. Ball back, so one steal leads to the other. Holmgren up top and down. A player who took a while to explode at Minnehaha Academy High School, but who developed his full potential before reaching the NCAA. Holmgren went to Gonzaga University, where he was coached by the legendary Mark Few, who had been at the helm of the Bulldogs basketball team for two decades. And the truth is that the freshman season was very, very impressive. In just 27 minutes of playing time per game, the center averaged 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 4 blocks per game on 61% shooting from the field and 39% shooting from three-point range. Holmgren was ranked as one of the top prospects in his class heading into the 2022 NBA Draft, where he was selected second overall by the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Oklahoma City Thunder select Chet Holmgren from Gonzaga University. However, before the start of the season, Chet suffered a serious foot injury when he tried to defend a drive by LeBron James in one of the many summer tournaments that fill the offseason calendar. That injury against King James caused him to miss the entire season. The Minnesota-born player offers a somewhat similar skill set to Wimbanyama, although he has some aspects that set him apart. While the Frenchman is noticeably taller, Holmgren is extremely agile for his height, and also his ball handling seems more polished from the outset, more aesthetically reminiscent of perimeter players. But the truth is that both are elite defenders who will develop a huge offensive arsenal during their careers. But this is the breath of things at 7 4, the step back J. But without a doubt, what differentiates them the most today are the players around them. 
Wembenyama came in as the number one pick in the draft to a San Antonio team that lacks the talent to compete for the playoffs. While the Spurs have good players like Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, or Jeremy Sohan, their rotation is extremely short, and the inexperience of all its members greatly complicates the fight in one of the wildest Western conferences we've seen, while Holmgren has landed in a project that's poised to contend. The Oklahoma City Thunder already have one of the best players in the league in Shai Gilgis Alexander, and other top young players like Josh Giddy, Jalen Williams, or Lou Dort that should allow them to fight for a direct playoff spot at the end of the season. Holmgren's injury, in a similar fashion to other players who suffered similar mishaps, such as Julius Randle or Joel Embiid, has allowed him to integrate and train with an NBA franchise that was completely focused on his development rather than immediate performance, as is often the case in the NCAA. Every week I'm doing more and more from one-on-one -on -one with coaches to one-on-one -on -one with some teammates to two-on-two. -two. two players whose paths have already crossed twice before their first official NBA game. Yeah, that's the thing about being two players who are only a year apart in age and have been in the world elite during their entire formative stage. The first duel between Wemby and Holmgren took place in nothing more and nothing less than the final of the U19 World Cup between the United States and France, a duel that was dominated by the Frenchman, who managed to show out with a performance of 30 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 blocks in an 83-81 defeat. Holmgren had a much more discreet performance, scoring 10 points, 5 assists, and 2 rebounds. However, the Thunder Center was up to the task in the second direct confrontation between the Giants, which took place just a few weeks ago during the same preseason. Holmgren scored 21 points and 9 rebounds in just 16 minutes of play, while Wemby had 20 points and 5 rebounds in 19 minutes of play. A duel in which the players guarded each other and starred the best performance of each team. And he's going to get to another seven foot of beautiful crossover, and he's going to win that battle majority of the time. The truth is that we will not have to wait long to witness the direct duel of the two rising stars in the NBA, as on November 15th, the Spurs will visit Oklahoma to face the Thunder. That will be ground zero of a rivalry that will surely accompany us for the next stage of our lives, and that could change the way we understand basketball. In an increasingly positionless sport, in which traditional height roles have ceased to exist, we're left with only strange mixtures and unique players. Unimaginable skill set and size in the context of the older NBA that would have seemed like something out of NBA 2K and that are nothing more than the reality of the NBA that awaits us in an increasingly near future. Wemby and Holmgren can redefine the center position in a completely different way than Nikola Jokic has managed to imprint with his unique style of play. Players who have a very different style than the Serbian, but who have even more athletic tools at their disposal. Players that let us sense that, in the end, the NBA has always been, and always will be, a league of big men.